everyone and welcome to Long's Toys. I have a Power Rangers Dino Charge review for you today. Uh, this is the first wave of the villain figures, which I think is wave 5, if I remember correctly, with one wave 1 being the 5 normal rangers, wave 2 being Fury and Vivix, wave 3 was pretty much just the Dino Drive Megazord fig, and then wave 4 was the Dino Drive... Uh, I'm sorry, I said the Dino... Dino Charge Megazord, the Dino Drive figures were in Wave 4, along with the Gold Ranger, um, Graphite Ranger, and the uh, Pterodactyl Megazord, which I'm sure has another name that I can't remember right now. In any case, so I think these are Wave 5. Um, I'm probably just going to, you know, refer to them as, like, you know, Villains Wave 1 or something like that. Uh, but in any case, you get Puzzler, Wrench, Curio, Ice Monster, which I believe on the show is called Ice Age. But I'm assuming there's some kind of copyright that they couldn't put Ice Age on the package, so they call them Ice Monster. And then we have Bones. So I'm having kind of trouble keeping them all in shot because it's, you know, the packages are fairly large. But we will get these guys out of the package and take a closer look at them in a minute. But I just want to kind of show you each one real quick if you wanted to take a look at their bio. I'll try to zoom in and, and if you want to read the bio you can go ahead. So there's Puzzler, check out Bones, check out his bio. Very nice pictures on the back, I have to say. And as far as the back, uh, I'm pretty sure they all have the same card on the back as far as what other figures are available. And Wave 1 and 2 of the villains are just kind of interspersed along with here, the Dino Drive figures I was talking about earlier. So that's Bones. Uh, Ice Monster. I'd like to take a look at his bio. Here is Curio. There you go. And then last but certainly not least, we have Wrench. So there you go. We'll go ahead, we'll get these guys out of the packaging, and we'll take a closer look at them one by one. So taking a look at these in really no particular order, I just decided to start with Wrench. Uh, pretty nice as far as, like, paint and detail goes. Uh, he's kind of a overall silverish, bluish gray color, uh, with a little bit of kind of darker blue here for accent, some red and white here on the chest. And you can see uh, the face. I'm going to zoom in real quick. And you can see he does have the teardrops coming down. Uh, that's from Kyoryuger. This customer was kind of the emissary of sadness. So he was crying all the time. So he had tears molded onto his costume. It's kind of neat that they decided to carry that over since it is in the show. Because they don't really play up that storyline in Dino Charge at all. But it's pretty neat. So even if you're just a fan of Kyoryuger, you might want to pick these up. Just because <clears throat> then you can have representations of characters you know, from that show. Because they kind of serve double duty. Uh, as far as articulation goes, the head is on a swivel, although mine kind of feels a little weird, almost like it doesn't want to swivel. Like, I feel like I'm twisting the thing in, underneath there, so I'm kind of not going to do that too much anymore. Um, I don't want the peg to break off. But anyway, you have, you know, rotation here in the shoulder, up and down, hindered a little bit by the shoulder pad, but not a big deal. Uh, it can do all the way around. You have pretty much 90 degrees in the elbow. No uh, bicep swivel, no wrist articulation, no waist articulation. Um, the hip is similar to the shoulder, but limited by the skirt. So I can kind of go out a little bit and a little forward, but that's kind of it. And he does not have any knee articulation, even though it, it really looks like he should. That's one solid piece. Now the toe, or I should say kind of at the ankle, you have a little bit of a swivel back and forth. It's not really a ball joint because it can't go up and down, but it can move a little bit back and forth. So you can, I mean, you can get him to stand. It will work well. He does come with one accessory, this axe, which has some very nice detail molded onto it. No additional paint. It's all one solid color, but it looks pretty good. You can go ahead and we'll pop this into his hand here. The hand is a little bit kind of tightly closed, but I think that's good because then you can kind of pop it in where it's thinnest and slide it up and it won't fall out of his hand. So it looks pretty good. I like him with the axe. He's got these kind of weird wings on his butt. They don't really do anything. I don't really remember that for the show from the show, but I'm sure it's in there. You know, if it's on this figure. 
But overall, I like the look of him. Uh, it's a sh it's a shame that he doesn't have the knee articulation. Um, but overall, you know, I think he's a good looking fig, and he's got decent paint applications. Up next, we have Curio. Uh, he's one of... I really like this figure. Uh, in the original Japanese, his name was Lucurio. Or Lucio or something to that effect. Um, and he definitely had a lot more paint and more detail on him. Uh, and I understand why they can't do that just for kind of, you know, budget constraints for these figures. Uh, but it's nice to at least get a representation of him, which I appreciate. Uh, he even comes with his little watering cam. Now, in the Japanese version, uh, Kyoryuger, that is, you know, the kind of the source material for Dino Charge, uh, he would use this when the monster would fall or be defeated. He would run over and water them with this can, and that's what would make them grow uh, to the giant size so they could fight it with the uh, Megazord. They didn't do that in this show. They decided to use the Magna Beam on Sludge's ship. So I think it's really cool that they decided to still incorporate this with the toy. I really appreciate that. In the show, this had kind of a uh, jack-o'-lantern motif, where I believe it had kind of triangle eyes and a mouth, and this was kind of coming out of the nose, and parts of it were painted green as well as orange, uh, which I really thought was cool. And, and if you are good at customizing, you could paint this easily and do something like that with this. Um, that would also that would probably be really, really cool. I have no ability for that, so <laughs> I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, but I appreciate that they included it, is, is the, basically what I'm trying to get at. Uh, it's kind of hard to see in his face because the hat is so big it casts a lot of shadow. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer. Tilt it up. You can see the eyes. They're kind of a green, kind of creepy eyes. And he's got kind of like a child's face almost. Uh, he's got this big scarf. The head can move from side to side. Uh, the, the arms can kind of pop out like this. But that's really all they can do. They don't have... Uh, do the wrists move? Oh, I'm sorry. The wrists do move. So I, that's nice. He does have wrist articulation. But that there's nothing else for the arm. It literally swivels front to back. I don't think it even goes in and out. It's just a straight swivel. No wrist or no like bicep swivel or anything like that. But there is this swivel at the wrist. Because that's a separate piece. Uh, then for the foot, kind of standard. You know, out to the side and front to back. But again, no knee articulation, and he's got no foot articulation either. So, go ahead, put his watering can in his hand, if we can get that going. I mean, again, it's a nice representation of the fig, or the character, it's a nice representation of the character, nice figure. Um, Would have loved to see more paint. I understand why they can't, you know, because of budgets and everything. But they have some nice colors going on. I mean, the helm, the hat looks pretty good. You got blue, you got two different colored green, white, orange. So you do have some nice colors coming into play here. Uh, it's just a question of, like, if you're someone who's good at customizing, you could really paint this guy up and he would probably look fantastic. But uh, other than the kind of lack of arm and leg articulation, I like this figure. Here we have Ice Monster, uh, but basically I'm just going to call him Ice Age from now on because that's, I believe, his name on the show. Uh, he's got massive hands. That's kind of his big draw. The character uh, on the show is white, but the figure is very, very white um, to the point that it's freaking out my camera because <laughs> the light's reflecting off of it. Uh, again, this is another figure that could have benefited from more paint, but I completely understand um articulation the head moves slightly back and forth it's hindered very much by the kind of spikes and the detail in the head which i think looks great you've got a little blue on the kind of snout there i want to say forehead whatever you want to call it yellow eyes and then the kind of build up on the head is pretty neat but it does hinder side to side movement uh the shoulder just rotates around no in and out he does have a bicep swivel and also a 90 degree, pretty much 90 degree swivel for the hands. Again, which are the main focus. These are his giant massive claw hands. The blue on these is very nice. Blue here painted very well. Kind of a sparkly metallic blue, which I like. No waist articulation. And then he's pretty much got uh, hips like everyone else. A little bit back and forth. Hindered by the skirt, but a little bit out to the side. And then he's got pretty much 90 degrees for the knee. So we do have knee articulation on some of these. Uh, he doesn't have any ankle articulation, but I don't really think he needs it. You can see he's got kind of a uh, 
ice skate thing going on here with his feet, which is pretty cool. I appreciate that. I think it's a cool design. So overall, I think this is a pretty excellent figure. He does have knee articulation, which is some of the ones the other doesn't. He have a little bit less in the shoulder department, but he's got these really cool shoulder pads, which I do like. And I feel like the reason they decided not to bother with kind of in and out is because they would probably hinder it anyway. So there's no point in giving it and then having it hindered immediately. So, you know, they decided to take some of that budget and give him knee joints and also maybe a little bit more pain applications, which I think he definitely benefits from. The pain on the arm is very nice. All right, so moving on up next, we have Bones here. Uh, he's definitely got some nice paint. All the yellow here on the front is nice. Um, I'm not really sure if this is supposed to be anything specific. It kind of reminds me, it almost looks like a frog to me. Like, this is the front of the frog head and the hands you can kind of see here. And maybe some back legs up here. But that could just be me looking at it and being crazy. Uh, no paint on the back. Very plain on the back. But that's kind of to be expected for these kind of things. But the yellow on the on the front definitely looks very nice. Uh, he's got no head articulation to speak of. He has no wrist or kind of bicep articulation. He's just got kind of out to the side and a little front to back for the shoulder. Uh, it's basically your standard shoulder joint, but because of the massive shoulder pads he's got, it's a little hindered. But I have to say, I think those shoulder pads are awesome. His whole kind of face and headdress and, and chest plate here is all pretty excellent, and the yellow paint on the front here is nice. Um, if you take a look under here, he doesn't have legs. I think this is a solid chunk of plastic. Um, the legs start right here. They're just connected and they literally just swivel around right there. So he does not, it's not like this is cloth that you can move out of the way and he's got hips and a normal deal there. This is a solid chunk of plastic and he's just got, you know, kind of long, you know, feet. <laughs> Basically, he's attached at kind of the boot cuff and it just, just swivels around. No other ankle articulation, nothing like that. So, he doesn't have a ton of articulation, but he looks good. He does come with his little, like, you know, uh, jar of bones. And that has a little hole right here. It literally just clips right in. And it's kind of nice. You can see it's kind of beveled so that it'll sit flush against the side of his leg. Well, his his make-believe leg because it's really just his dress. <laughs> he doesn't have a real leg. Uh, but that's cool. I mean, he can't, like, put the hand inside it. You could always take it off, I guess, if you wanted to do that. And then you can pretend like he's reaching in, something like that. Uh, but he can't really get his hand in there while it's connected to him. But he can kind of rest it on there. So while this guy really doesn't have a whole lot going on in terms of posability, I think they did a nice job with molding for sure. And the paint, I think, of the yellow looks pretty good. You can see there's some black here, and especially on his face. And he's got red eyes, which do look cool. I'll try to get in here. You can kind of see him. They're very tiny, very beady little red eyes. But definitely neat. So this guy definitely lacks posability. And he's definitely the weakest as far as posability. But I like what they've done as far as they said, look, we're probably not going to be able to get a lot of posability out of this guy. But we're just going all out as far as detail, molding, and paint. So what he lacks in one area, he definitely makes up for in others. Last up here, we have Puzzler. Uh, I actually got these on the Toys R Us website, and for some reason they listed him as just Maze. Uh, but he actually is Puzzler, if you look at the front of the package. Um, he looks pretty good, I have to say. The back, not a lot of detail going on there. Pretty much solid plastic colors. But on the front, really nice paint. I mean, for the most part, 75%. It just kind of ends at the knees. It was like they painted everything to here, and then at the last minute they're like, we don't have time to paint the legs just make them because you can tell that it's it's this whole leg piece at the knee has no paint so they just they painted the whole figure probably because well no because this would be a separate piece i don't know whatever reason they decided not to paint these two pieces and they just attached them without paint but the rest of them looks great i mean the green maze work paint on the yellow looks fantastic i love his eyes crazy little beady eyes his teeth and his mouth look awesome as far as articulation he's got Nothing going on in the head. The the arms just kind of swivel like this. It's a shame. I feel like they could have done some wrist articulation if they wanted to. But it's to me, it's not that big a deal. At least you're getting some kind of arm articulation. 
Uh, the, the hip joints are pretty much the same as usual, but he's got kind of one of those like butt skirts that really hinders the backwards movement. So you're really only going to get, like, you can definitely have him sit. No problem there. But, you know, you can't really have him. He's doing like kind of a Super Mario jump. But <laughs> you're not really going to get any kind of backwards movement at the hips. Uh, and then you've got pretty much 90 degrees at the knee, which is nice. Uh, no ankle or foot articulation because those are solid pieces. So I love the paint on like everything above the knees because the the down here. I mean, I mean, you really would have only had to do the shin guards in green outlining. So it's kind of a bummer that they did not do that. But the rest of them look so good that I can forgive the legs. Uh, he does come with one accessory, this kind of large goal flag. Fits very easily in his hand, no problems there. Uh, you can kind of use it as a tripod to help him stand. But, I mean, he stands pretty well on his own without it. But, you know, can't help. Or can't hurt to have another thing. So, I think he looks great. I mean, he definitely, you know, lacking articulation in certain areas. And from the back, very boring. But from the front, I think he looks fantastic. I personally love these figures. And it's really mostly for the fact that we haven't gotten villain figures in a Power Ranger line for a long time. Like, we'll get maybe the Big Bad and, you know, maybe one Foot Soldier, but that's really about it. This is the first time we've kind of seen, you know, uh, secondary monster characters and also Monster of the Week characters from... I mean, I can't remember exactly the last time because I didn't always collect uh, figures. I kind of started collecting... I've always collected the, the Mecha, the Megazords. But I've kind of only really started getting back into the figures with, like, Megaforce. Um, so I'm not sure if they did it in RPM, but this is definitely the first time since Saban took control again. So I think it's great. I mean, are they as good as the Ranger figures? Probably not, because those have a consistent level of articulation. They all come with accessories. Although, four out of five of these came with accessories. Not much, but it's still something, so I think that's nice. And they're definitely, there's just such variety. Like, looking at the color schemes and the juxtaposition of all the different colors with these guys, it just, it looks so fun. It's brightly colored, you know, you have kind of a rainbow effect going on here. It's just a lot of fun. I think it's really neat. So, I found these on ToysRUs.com, all except Curio. I originally had ordered all five, and then when Curio, quotes, came in the mail, it turned out to be Slammer. So, I had to contact them and say, hey, you sent me the wrong one. And the reason they did that was because they were out of stock, and I guess the order went through, but they didn't really have stock, whatever, whatever. So I lucked out and just found him in a store, but all the rest I got on ToysRUs.com. Not sure if they're still up. And the other thing is the price for Toys R Us keeps going up and down. Sometimes it's $10.99, sometimes it's $8.99. It's all over the place. But I know a while ago these were found at Walmarts. I've still never seen them at any of my Walmarts. Uh, but I, I bought them on ToysRUs.com, and I've kind of seen some of them in stores. I think I've seen... No, I think by now I've seen all of them at different Toys R Us's around the, around my area. So, if you're looking for these still, I would definitely try ToysRUs.com. I would check your local Toys R Us, because they're starting to show up. I haven't seen them at Targets or Walmarts personally. I know Walmart, like I said, had a run of them a while ago. I still don't know if anyone's seen them at Target, so I'm not sure. But... I recommend them. I think they're a lot of fun. You know, if you're looking for these, good luck. Go out. I would definitely try Toys R Us as your, your best bet. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinions on these guys. Please like and share this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the first wave of villain figures. Technically, I think wave five of Dino Charge figures from Power Rangers Dino Charge. And thanks for watching.